Good morning, this is Allison Pena with Worldwide ERC. Thanks to everyone for connecting and welcome to today's webinar program, the virtual survey through the eyes of the transferee, sponsored by Server Worldwide Relocation and Moving. Before we begin, please take a moment to review Worldwide ERC's webinar disclaimer. And now I would like to go over a few housekeeping announcements. If you are experiencing technical difficulties joining the WebEx session today, please dial 866-779-3239 from the U.S. Email questions may be sent to support at WebEx.com. During the presentation, all participants will be in a listen-only mode. If you have a question during the presentation, you may submit it online at any time. To submit your question, please use the Q&A tab, which is located in the lower right-hand portion of your screen. Simply click on the tab and type your question into the dialog box at the bottom of the screen and then click the Send button. Please note that all written questions selected during this webinar will be answered publicly. An email containing a link to the course evaluation and information on accessing the handout and recording of this session will go out later this afternoon. Please be on the lookout for it. It will come to you from messenger at webex.com. This webinar is worth one CRP and one GMS credit. If you are a GMS seeking CE credit for this event, you must include the name and date of this webinar on your GMS renewal application at the time you apply for recertification. The renewal application is available online. If you hold your CRP designation, credit will be added to your record internally within about 10 days. Attendees must be individually registered and logged in for the majority of the event to receive credit. The archived webinar session will be available to all for the next month and available to worldwide ERC members for a second month. After two months, our Premier Learning Platform subscribers can continue to view the session for up to two years. CRPs who log in and view the archived session will also receive continuing education credit automatically upon completion of the session. Credit processing fees for webinars are no longer collected. And now it is my pleasure to introduce today's presenters. Mike Smith joined the service system in 1988 as a management trainee with the NFC. In 1993, he served as manager, Managing Director of Allied Pickfords in the Czech Republic. In 1996, Mike was appointed as Head of European Coordination for NFC International in Belgium. He joined Allied International in the USA in 1998 as Manager of Global Pricing and Procurement, responsible for overseeing a team that negotiated global ocean, air, overland freight, and customs agent contracts. Two years later, he assumed the role of Manager of U.S. Operations, responsible for the development and management of Allied International's logistics and freight forwarding operations. Mike assumed responsibilities for account management and sales in 2006 and became involved in developing the go-to-market strategy and customer-facing accountability processes. In 2010, Mike became Vice President responsible for Servo Moving Services International Moving Sales Strategy and the continued development of innovative products in the international moving services space. Mike has made significant contributions to the growth of moving process platforms and operational delivery. He contributed to the development of a sales and operational process through the identification and execution of benefits strategies that focus on the advance of compliance, control, quality, and cost containment processes that improve the experience for the customer. Jennifer Garcia direct, um, joined uh, Serva in 1996 as an international relocation consultant responsible for managing many of Serva's Fortune 500 accounts. In 2004, Jennifer went to the United Kingdom to work on site with a Serva corporate client. In 2007, she became the international operations manager where she oversaw Serva's international moving business for Allied International, North American International, and Serva Move Management. In 2012, Jennifer joined the account management team as Moving Services Account Manager, and in June 2018, she was promoted to the Director of Account Management. Jennifer is the key business owner and relationship director for Moving Services Accounts. She leads a team of account managers that, that handle both domestic and global account management for moving. Her primary responsibilities are to provide transportation services of household goods while managing positive client and moving agent relationships. She is the main point for moving during implementation as well as the contact person for relocation account managers, operational teams, and moving agents, providing strategic leadership towards the short and long-term goals of the client. Jennifer is also responsible for regular business reviews, highlighting household goods performance, and ensuring alignment with client objectives and quality metrics. I am delighted to welcome both Jennifer and Mike to the program today. 
and I will now turn the program over to Mike. Thank you. Alison, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, this is going to be a seminar on the virtual survey through the eyes of the transferee. Um, the objectives of this seminar were to um, put in place a mystery shopper experience. The mystery shopper today was Jennifer Garcia, who's been uh, a colleague and teammate of mine for more than 20 years. And the objective was to evaluate the experience of the transferee through insightful market research and intelligence um, which are part of the mystery shopper experience. The objectives were to understand the following elements of a virtual survey performed by three very different providers. What experience would we encounter via a virtual medium in comparison to a physical survey? How easy is the virtual medium for the transferee to use? What is the ability to book a virtual survey on the transferee's preferred dates? What is the interface to confirm an appointment? How does one actually go in and start the process? How does one change the process if our needs change? A very important part of this process became the interpersonal connection between the virtual surveyor and the transferee who is potentially doing the move. And we'll go into some of the history of what happened with a physical survey and what the objectives of a physical survey were in comparison to the new norm, which is the virtual survey. And then the technology interface. Was it really a technology interface which required technological information previous to the virtual survey taking place? Or could anybody really use it and was the ease of use uh, commensurate with the amount of information which was being collected? The providers were all the professional virtual survey companies. And the questions that we wanted to answer to make sure that we had a new norm in place because of the events of COVID-19 was, does the virtual survey collect the correct information to meet the needs of the moving company? Does the virtual survey replace the future, future needs of the physical survey? How do the personnel that perform the process interact on the moving company's behalf? Do they represent themselves in the name of the moving company? Do they represent themselves in the name of the uh, company that the transferee is working for? Or do they rep re represent themselves in terms of their own uh, organization on behalf of? And what is the uh, implications of that strategy of understanding how exactly the person is first connecting with that transferee? Downstream, there's an influence can the virtual survey have on the relocation experience of the transferee. As we all surmise, the first interaction in a move is sometimes the most as it sets the tone for how somebody is going to feel the moving company or the relocation company, their employer, is representing the overall process of uh, putting a good foot forward and ensuring that the business of moving this individual is taken the best care of. And as the adoption is being enforced because of COVID-19 to the use of the virtual survey, has that rapid deployment maintained quality? And I think the overarching comment that we want to make at this point in time, our objective was to observe and experience the performance of how the interaction with the transferee was, not to grade the virtual survey company. So let's first of all take a little bit of history. Um, why does a survey have to be performed? Um, many times when we start a webinar or a, an informational program like this, we assume that people have an understanding of what is taking place and why it's taking place. Um, but with so many on the, on the webinar today, I just want to take a step back and ensure that everybody had a grounding as to what a survey is. Not everybody has moved. Uh, and for those who have not moved, this may be somewhat enlightening to ensure that there's an understanding. So originally a survey was the first face-to-face -face contact between the transferee and the moving company. The survey was generated 
because a person who wanted to move and had put their home on the market had been contacted by the moving company via door hangers. These were direct marketing campaigns where a, uh, a surveyor in his car in the community going from one survey to the next would see that a new person had put their home on the marketplace. And as part of that process, they would recognize that through the realtor sign in the, in the front and then would go and attach a door hanger, which was an informational uh, direct marketing campaign to the front door of that person's home, inviting them to contact with the moving company to ensure that they knew that that service was available and to start the, the direct process of communication. Alternatively, um, the transferee would use the yellow pages uh, and let their fingers do the walking and call the moving companies based upon um, the list in the uh, yellow pages of which moving company was near them, who they worked for, what their affiliations were, and the advertising information in the yellow pages. But why was a survey so important? And is it really just a survey? Or is it really historically there to achieve multiple goals? And that's exactly the case. Historically, the first thing that was always important was for the moving company to build uh, an interpersonal relationship with the person buying the service. When the person knocks on the door and crosses the threshold into the person's home, that relationship is the start of what can be a very uh, extensive in period of time through a very stressful period of time. And so having a, an organization which is represented by a likable individual who is both knowledgeable and courteous was a fundamental reason why people um, became surveyors and generated business. Inside the home, the surveyor was there to inspect the transferee's uh, goods and ensure that they could establish a weight and volume to understand the information of what was going to be needed to be moved. And then thirdly, the surveyor was there to sell additional services and increase revenue for that moving company. The surveyor was trained to walk around the home and assess the contents by noting furniture amounts and sizes, plus checking drawers and cupboards to establish the resources required to complete the move. And those resources were the size of the vehicle, the number of men, the materials which were being used. And from there, that could all be checked off back onto the resources to organize the schedule to ensure that the right people were there and that the right information was uh, given to the team prior to arrival. The surveyor would also discuss with the transferee the items of significant value that may require special handling or items of personal importance. And again, this was partly to ensure that insurance could be sold and that handling materials were brought correctly. But again, it was also to ensure that that interpersonal uh, touch had been seen as being an important part of that sales process. And the moving company would understand that without a proper rapport between the surveyor and the transferee, the chance to book a move was limited. Therefore, surveyors were trained on transferee service and table-side interpersonal skills. People buy from people they trust and like. How would that translate from a personal uh, environment where it was a physical survey done by two people sat in a room conversing and looking at the overall picture that was being painted in front of them versus through a virtual medium where the uh, ability to create a relationship is separated by the handheld device and the interpersonal skills of using that handheld device. The virtual survey really redefines a service. Um, as we all know and we're all living through, 2020 is the year of unprecedented times. We have all had to redefine our business models. Specifically to moving, we have historically required the in-home service meeting to examine the, com the contents and establish the metrics to service our core business. But because of COVID-19, we had to look for alternative methods. Luckily, those alternative methods were already in existence and the virtual survey had been able to be used as a, uh, an organizational tool for four to five years. But in that four to five years, it's... Um, use and adaptation had been probably less than 7% of the time. And at the time of the beginning of April of 2020, we had to switch from that um, potential of asking if something was reasonable to do 7% of the time to the usage being greater than 95% of the time. 
The virtual survey successfully eliminates the requirement of that in-home face-to-face meeting and so met the needs that we had imposed upon us for that social distancing and the reason to keep separate unless completely necessary. It's, easy, it's easily accessible. The handheld technology is the only tool needed to record the necessary data. And we wanted to understand how that actually interaction took place. And the virtual survey uh, has always been seen as option, but it's based upon the transferees agreement. And previously, the capacity for virtual surveys had not seen any volume constraints. And the demographics of the people who were agreeing to use and take part in virtual surveys were accommodating to the process because it was part of their new norm. It was part of something that they were buying online. They were doing more events online. And they didn't have a historic requirement for that physical element. And one of the things that we saw and one of the evaluations that we tried to look at was how will the virtual survey change and how will the events that are taking place change the development of the virtual survey? At the moment, we found that the virtual survey was really a medium in which a person who was trained in surveying could see the inside of a person's home. There was no um, artificial intelligence which was looking at the contents and doing the calculations. All the calculations were actually fairly manual, done by individuals, really looking through a portal but seeing the same cupboard, the same credenza, the same items, and talking to the transferee. So how does the process start? How will we first be contacted? I think it's important to evaluate these um, based upon the objective of ensuring that if the process doesn't start well and the individual uh, virtual survey organization doesn't have a welcoming process, then that there's initial failure, and we didn't want to see that. Um, Jen is the mystery shopper, stroke secret shopper. Do you want to jump in here and start to talk about how the process started for you, what you saw, and then how the individual survey companies performed? Absolutely. Thank you, Mike. It is important to note that this was the first time I ever experienced a virtual survey. I had a lot of ideas what to expect, based on the material I read and how the process would start. Our objective was to review the processes of three major virtual survey providers. My goal was to experience the process through the eyes of the transferee, all the while being attentive to the importance for the process to be simple, easy, and safe. I wanted to be sure that the information that the vendors received to start the process was consistent. Each survey company has a website and app, and each have a process to initiate contact and set the appointment. When engaging vendor A, my appointment was taken over the phone. Vendor B and C emailed me an intro email providing a link to click and arrange the date and time of the survey. Setting up all three appointments was easy. What impressed me was the ability to set up a virtual survey by the click of a button based on my schedule. The option to select any time during the day, evening, and early morning hours, like 3 a.m., was available. This made me think about the dynamics inside our homes as we all tread through the new normal. As families are focused now more than ever on ways to balance working from home, homeschooling their children, and the health and safety of their family, the options for scheduling the virtual survey was considerate and accommodating. Once I selected my date and time, entered my contact details, and clicked the button, I immediately received a confirmation notification with instructions on how to download the app as well as options to reschedule or cancel. I was also given the option to add the appointment into my Outlook or personal email calendar, which was nice as I didn't have to remember to do that separately. Directions to download the app was provided in my appointment confirmation email. Vendor B's directions instructed that once the app was downloaded to restart my device. 
vendor A and C did not require the, my device to be restarted. Once the apps were downloaded, the apps used for vendor A and C populated a unique ID number that consisted of numbers and letters. Vendor A, I received an email with that unique ID number. On the day of the survey, I received text messages from all three vendors prior to the start time. The text provided the name of the surveyor and also asked if I was still on schedule for the start time. It was nice to receive the text just in case I was running late or had any issues with the app. I could communicate with that surveyor via text. I was instructed via text a few minutes before the start time, instructing me that if I was ready to begin, click the download app, enter the unique ID, and we would be connected. I followed the instructions to the letter, opened the app, entered the unique ID, and the surveyor and I were face-to-face -face ready to begin our survey. Over to you, Mike. When using, when using an app, Can you unmute me, please, Allison? I, I just, I just did. You were, you were fine. I believe I'm muted. We can hear you. Okay. Um, one of the important elements of the app is that the introduction made by the virtual survey company is organized and curated as pre-scripted elements. Um, one of the things that we found was that the surveyors all had some very standard scripting which had not been curated on the different types of the moves. So whether it was a domestic move, an international move, or an interstate move, um, or a move which was had per, uh, specific elements which were already known as part of the process, um, the, the preamble was very generic. And one of the improvements that we saw initially was that the uh, organization of pre-written script could increasingly help the customization and the connection between that virtual surveyor and the um, person that they were representing as far as the company or the relocation management organization. The relocation uh, company also ensures that the initial interaction with the virtual survey uh, via the app starts with the necessity to agree, agree terms and conditions. These are to protect the user and the survey company and require acceptance. All three survey companies agreed and stated not to distribute any gathered information without approval. And when working with a relocation management company, the data management of the virtual survey organization would be appropriate with any PII data management as agreed between the relocation management company and the purchasing customer. And on the right-hand side, you can see the specific differences between the way that there is notations. These are scriptings that we had performed uh, a number of years ago as part of a, a looking at how the text should um, help a virtual surveyor through the organizational structure of dealing with a transferee. And you can see that there are uh, some additional elements which could be added to this, which would really aid in customizing and curating the interaction. As we look at the technology, the technology really breaks down into three distinct functions or user interfaces. Uh, the app and the survey company interface to book the appointment and carry out a self-survey, which Jen's already talked to. The use of the handheld device to record the visual data and the specific period of time when the virtual survey is taking place. And then the technology of how the information is gathered and then presented to give actually the results of that survey back to the moving company. Jen, do you have comments on how you thought the technology interfaced? Absolutely. I thought that the apps were very easy to open, the picture was clear, and the sound quality was good. I quickly learned after the first virtual survey was completed to turn my handheld device on do not disturb mode to mute all the pop-up notifications, texts, and phone calls. It was a little distraction from my vantage point, but not visible to the surveyor. I was also not made aware that once the surveyor and I were connected through the app, that we would be face-to-face. -face. I was glad I looked presentable. 
I felt that the face-to-face -face intro was used to start building a rapport. And it did put me at ease to actually see the person that would be touring my home and documenting all of my items. Mike? The app itself on all three vendors was easy to use. Each downloaded easily. However, as Jennifer has already said, some required the need to restart. Um, all do ask for access to the camera and the microphone. And within the app, there is the capability to video chat with the consultant, self-record video of your personal belongings in the case where you may change items which are necessary to be moved. And there is the ability to share the video with multiple vendors or, or organizations. This really was dependent on the type of move that was being ordered. If it was a corporate move where it was being done through a relocation management company, this would be turned off. If it was a private transferee engagement utilizing the virtual survey process, then they could use this as a marketing tool to sell their move to multiple vendors and collect bids. And then the schedule feature video calls with the surveyor and move at a later time. The use of the handheld uh, was very simple. Uh, really, the only thing that needs to be mentioned here is that the recording of the survey is not being done on the phone of the uh, transferee. It's the use of the app, which becomes the medium utilizing the video, uh, and then the information is recorded behind the firewall of the survey company. And at the conclusion of the virtual survey, a series of questions are, are ensured that are being asked to ensure that all the rooms have been covered and that no elements are being missed. Um, once the shipper says something like, okay, that's everything, um, it's in, important that the surveyor says, is there a garage or a shed or a basement or an attic outside to make sure that nothing has been missed. And once these have been completed, the standards of the surveyor are to complete the internal documentation that the moving company requires, which requires for an understanding of the number of pieces which are being moved, the total number of items, the number of rooms, what that weight translates to, the volume of work, and how many carriers packed cartons are going to be needed to be packed on the day. Preparation of the home prior to the virtual survey was an interesting um, conundrum which we encountered. Uh, Jen, share your thoughts on what happened on the morning of the first survey. Well, Mike, as you and I both know, the accuracy of the survey predetermines how the packing, crating, third-party service, and loading is carried out by the origin agent. The survey results help build the move plan for the customer. With that in mind, I found myself the morning of the first virtual survey cleaning my home. I was vacuuming my floors, and when I got ready to mop my floor, I remembered it's a virtual survey. They don't care about how my floors look, but my cabinets and closets need to be organized to get an accurate account of my goods. So off I went, I started doing a quick once over just to make sure that my items were organized. I think it's fair to say that all three companies stated that the survey did not require advanced preparation. Uh, none of the virtual survey companies was uh, ensuring that there was a certain level of organization or they couldn't do something. So I want to be very clear about that. They did request that the transferee have a tape measure and a flashlight available. This is more to help the surveyor build that relationship with the transferee and not to put a burden on the transferee. However, they do advise that the probability of accuracy is greater if the rooms have some element of organization. And as a person who's physically done surveys and been in the homes of organized individuals, it's certainly easier to survey a home on the left and right based upon the left and right pictures uh, rather than the, um, the organization of the person who owns the kitchen in the middle picture. The reason for the tape measure is really going to that element, which is the creating of high value items and items of significant importance. Those are two different things, and, and Jen will talk more at length about how the virtual surveyors uh, defined those uh, two criteria, if at all. But I thought before we get into the specifics of what happened at the time of the survey, we just put another couple of definitions in place. 
When is a crate important or appropriate? Crates are expensive and it's only appropriate to crate an item if the value is fitting or if the item is of a sentimental value to the transferee. So when a physical survey takes place, there tends to be a dialogue over the value of a piece of goods, not necessarily just its breakable content. In the 2000s, the purchase of chimneys from the likes of Home Depot became a very prevalent element in a lot of people's homes. These could be purchased for about $75. Uh, it became quite an interesting concept in the moving industry at the time that chimneys would be crated with a, with a cost of a crate in excess of $400 because of the size of the chimney. And obviously at that point in time, the crate was more valuable than its contents. And it wasn't really relevant at that point in time to do it unless that chimney was of sentimental value to the individual. And so there has to be a dialogue to ensure that the right documents, sorry, the right items are being crated and that the right documentation is collected to ensure the size uh, and the crating is exact. One of the things that was interesting as we went through this process was that the crating results were all different from the three virtual survey um, processes. Vendor A identified eight items needed to be created, vendor B identified 10 items, and vendor C identified nine items. And so not preempting Jennifer's commentary, but obviously the, the level of dialogue was different between the three surveys on what was important, what should be created, and what should have uh, a significant uh, um, care taken to those goods. So now we get to the most important part of this. What happened through the walkthrough um, when Jen was interacting face-to-face -face with that virtual surveyor on those three occasions? Jen, back to you on the day of the survey. Thank you, Mike. Before I walk you through my experience with virtual surveys, I would like to share a little bit about myself. When I started my career as an international move consultant, I learned quickly how stressful starting a new job and relocating was for our transferees. Today, when you look at the 10 most stressful life events, one being the most stressful, relocation and moving are ranked number four. Chronic illness or injury and financial problems are ranked below relocation and moving. That was pretty intense for me to see that. I immersed myself into move management, expectation setting, and customer service. I was invited into many transferee homes to serve as an on-site manager, making sure the scope of work carried out by our partners and the expectations of the transferee were joined hand in hand, all the while looking for opportunities to make the engagement efficient, easier, stress-free, and accommodating. So when the opportunity came to me to participate in the virtual survey process, I jumped at the offer, sign me up. I quickly arranged the virtual survey date and time with all three vendors. I did some research, reading up on the ratings and reviews of the apps to get an idea of what to expect. I downloaded the apps and was ready to go. What I did not expect was on the morning of the first survey, I started to feel a little bit uneasy. I was stressed. What I've counseled my transferees all these years to try not to feel I was feeling it. Then the questions started coming. What if my house isn't organized enough? What if I forget to show them something? Do I lead the walkthrough? Do I point out something that I think they missed? I had to remind myself, I'm not really moving. With that, I received a text from vendor A asking me if I was ready to join the survey. And if so, click the link below, which opened the downloaded app on my device. Easy. And with that, we were connected. Face to face, we introduced ourselves. Vendor A explained the purpose of the survey, asked me where I was moving to. I was not ready for that question because again, I'm not moving, immediate stress. And the first location that came to my mind was Albany, New York. When are you looking to move? I said, in the fall, in my opinion, best time to move. And she responded with a, ooh, that is great. I appreciated her response because in the moving industry, June through August is crazy busy. 
we then exchanged a few pleasantries. During the face-to-face -face with vendor B, after explaining the purpose of the survey, the surveyor went on to explain the need to capture all the items I was looking to move, to stop and ask questions, and directed me on how to begin the tour of my home. Vendor C did not know where Albany, New York was, and asked me how to spell Albany twice, which I did, and I communicated that it was located in upstate New York. Vendor A and B looked professional and prepared. Their surroundings looked to be in an office setting, sitting in a chair, clearly using their computer camera. Vendor C looked a bit disheveled. No office setting. I thought maybe sitting on a sofa. Hard to focus on our face-to-face -face, as it seemed the surveyor was moving around as his image was jumping on the screen. Therefore, I kind of thought it was being, he was using a handheld device. All three vendors confirmed if I had my tape measure, which I did. Vendor B directed that I point out any items that were high value or sentimental. I asked what was considered high value. I just knew what the response would be, the same response that a move consultant would give. Any item valued over $2,000 or greater, or any item valued over $100 per pound. But to my surprise, the response was any item that I considered expensive or holds a special value to me. Stress level has now just shot to zero. I'm at ease. Vendor B cares about my stuff. Vendor B went on to direct me on where to start when entering a room, what to show first, and how to close to stand to give an accurate visual. Vendor A and C did not ask if I had any high-valued items or direct me to where to start when entering the room. All three vendors asked if I was ready to begin and instructed me to flip the camera screen and start the walkthrough. Vendor B and C requested that I start outside in the front of my home to give them a visual of the access. Asked if I've seen any tractor trailers come through my neighborhood and if I knew of any parking restrictions. Vendor A did not request for a visual of the outside to check the access. As we entered the home, I panned the furniture pieces in each room. Vendor B did stop me within the first two minutes and asked me to start from one corner, pan the items on the walls first, giving a 360 degree view, and then show the furniture items. Some of the questions from the vendors were, is that item solid wood? Do the doors slide open or pull open? Is that a set? Does the sofa recline? And does it come apart? Can those glass shelves be removed? How deep is that closet? I see you have storage bins. How many are there? And what are the contents? Vendor A and B requested a few times for me to stand back so they could snap a picture of different furniture items like the china closet and the entertainment center. Vendor B requested to snap a few pictures of the items that were inside the china closet. When I received the survey results, Vendor C also took pictures but did not communicate to me during the survey that the pictures were being taken. All three vendors requested for me to use my tape measure to take the dimensions of the wall hanging, artwork, mirrors, and TVs over 32 inches. I measured and called out the length and height of all items that the surveyors asked me to measure. Vendor A and C did not explain what the dimensions were to be used for. However, vendor B, not only asked me for the length, height, 
but also the width of the item, and then communicated that the dimensions were to be used for customs trading. The surveyor provided me an explanation as to what customs crating was and the benefits of crating. Vendor A did ask me every time I showed a TV if I had the original box for the TV, and I did not. When in the kitchen, I panned the items on the counters and was asked to open the cabinet and to step back to allow a full view. Vendor B and C asked me to open the bottom cabinet, pull out the shelves, and open all the drawers. Vendor A told me I didn't have to open the bottom cabinets or any of the drawers. Vendor A and B told me that only non-perishable, unopened food items can be moved and no liquids. Vendor C's approach was a little bit different. The surveyor asked, you do know that you can't move food, right? My response was soft and a little bit intimidated, yes. Vendor B even asked me to open the dishwasher to make sure those items were accounted for. Luckily, I emptied it out that morning when I was rushing around trying to get organized. I would not have wanted my dirty dishes recorded. All three vendors asked if I was moving the appliances. I responded the washer and dryer. Vendor B asked me to provide the make and model and serial number of the washer and dryer and treadmill and told me where I could locate it on the appliance. All three vendors asked if I had the shipping bolt for the washer and dryer. All three vendors also asked the size of all the beds and if the mattresses were sleep number, memory foam, or standard mattresses. Vendor B asked if any items were stored under the bed. Vendor B asked me to leave the backyard and garage for last. Vendor B also told me that my plants could not be moved. I felt that a bell went off when she addressed the plants. I know that conversation at times surrounding plants can be difficult to have. Vendor B shared how beautiful my plants were and told me not to worry as I could move the pot if they were empty and cleaned and start over in my new location. Empathy goes a long way. Vendor B and C reminded me the gas, to empty the gas for my lawnmower. All three vendors told me my propane tanks were restricted. Vendor B reminded me to defrost the mini fridge and mini deep freezer before the pack and load date to make sure also that my outdoor grill was cleaned of all grease and free of debris. Vendor B called out a few items to me and asked if the item was high valued or part of a collection. That surveyor, Vendor B, also went on to explain that delicate items would be handled with special care. I was surprised when I think someone needs to go on mute. I was surprised when reviewing the survey results that Vendor B, there were some notes on those survey results concerning the delicate sentimental items and to handle with care. Vendor B discussed crating and third-party service, what it was, and the possibility that it was going to be needed to accommodate my shipment. At the end of each survey, the three vendors asked to switch back to face-to-face -to -face mode. They confirmed that I did not have an attic, basement, or off-site storage, wanted confirmation that I did show them all the items I was looking to move, Vendor B asked if I was looking to move any automobiles. All three vendors explained that the survey results would be provided to my move consultant. Vendor A and B also asked if they addressed all of my questions and if there was anything else they could help me with. With that, Mike will go ahead and discuss the survey results. Thanks, Jen. So as we bring this webinar to conclusion, 
Uh, I think it's important to share with you the results of the three virtual surveys that took place. Remember that each of these virtual surveys was led by the virtual survey company. Jen responded with the information that was asked and was uh, showing them based upon the information and directions that they were given, were giving to her. The first thing that's important to recognize is that on each of the uh, survey results, the number of rooms was identified. Um, and you can see that the number of rooms in Jen's house changes depending upon who's viewing the information and through the handheld device. And that's because the definition of a room can be different. In some cases, a closet or a hallway is defined as a room. In others, it's part of the overall structure of the building. And so whilst looking at this having a 33% variance, it was easy to define in the uh, responses that came from the virtual survey companies how they were interpreting different rooms and how that definition could be, could be variable. The most important item here is the overall weight of the shipment. And you can see there was a 10.95% uh, variance between the reflected weight that potentially uh, survey company A was going to see and survey company C was going to see. Within a 10% variance of the medium, which was B, um, is we thought very acceptable. Uh, for a virtual survey environment, having 5% either way of the median was a good number to have. One of the items that was interesting was the total items packed. And you can see there, you're starting to get up in the range of percentages. And within those total items packed, we talked about the costs and crating differentials, which would have a difference of around $387. But the biggest difference was in the carrier packed items. These are when the person who is carrying out the virtual survey is looking at the detail of what's in the cupboards, what's in the uh, wardrobes, what items are going to be required to be carrier packed, packed by the moving company in their uh, resources when they come into the home, you can see there's a significant difference there of almost 48% based upon 176 being the low and 262 being the high. And I think in looking and hearing Jen describe the experience of vendor number B and vendor number C, the attention to detail was significant between each of those. And that was then reflected in, I think, the estimate being accurate or not as accurate. And the not as accurate uh, estimate, which came from vendor C, could have a significant cost variance. The cost of a moving company coming into your home and being requested to pack those boxes is significant, and that $2,320 would be a direct cost, which would be part of the uh, evaluation and estimate at the beginning of that survey process when presented to the moving company and onto the relocation company. So whilst the overall weight was in a tolerance of the 5%, some of the other elements, which were the carrier packed items, weren't exactly um, within the alignment that we wanted. Just for everybody's knowledge, the, the size of the home was a 31 square, 3,100 square foot home, four bedrooms, two and a half baths with two garages. So Jen, it really comes back down to what our overall experience was when we started this and we talked about what the purpose of this exercise was we talked about what was our experience so as the person who was the mystery shopper and the person who uh, undergo uh, the trials and tribulations of the, the virtual survey tell us what your experience was please sure the overall experience was not cumbersome the apps were very easy to use I did, however, experience the app that Vendor C provided. It did crash twice during the walkthrough, which required the surveyor to call and prompt me to join again via the app. The surveyor was unsure of what caused that disconnection. The survey process differed with the three vendors in many ways. Mind you, I showed the same items each and every time. My interactions with the three surveys lasted from 15 minutes, vendor A. It was short, sweet, but not complete. 30 minutes with vendor C, it felt a bit rushed and unorganized. And one hour with vendor B, I felt it was very thorough, informative, and I felt the surveyor cared about my goods. 
The time the surveyor spends building a rapport and conducting the survey is reflected in the survey results. As you explained, Mike, vendor B spent an hour with me and reported the least number of carrier packed items, which has a financial impact on the final cost of the household goods. The weight and total items to move was more accurate, in my opinion, on the documentation from vendor B, and it was very descriptive. The time and attention vendor B carried out, the questions that vendor B asked me, and how my questions were answered made me feel comfortable. Again, I felt vendor B cared about my goods. My overall takeaway was that a pleasant professional experience is nice. But if the time spent, the attention is lacking and rushed, and the ability to project that caring aspect is missing, then the experience is forgettable. After all, in the eyes of the transferee, the experience with the surveyor sets the tone for what you can expect from the household goods movers and the coordination of your shipment. Mike? Thank you, Jen, for um, volunteering to be the mystery shopper. We appreciate all the time and effort that you put into that. I really uh, thought that was a uh, enlightening experience for me to hear your explanation of the uh, events that you went through. So thank you very much. And with that, Alison, we shall hand it back to ERC. And if there are any questions, we can answer them. Okay, great. Thank you so much uh, to both Jennifer and Mike for an excellent presentation. Uh, we will be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, as a reminder, you can type your questions into the Q&A box, which is located in the lower right-hand side of your screen. Uh, I see that we already have a couple questions, so let us uh, go for it. Um, let's see. First one. Um, apart from these surveys, do you have any um, general data showing the accuracy of a virtual survey versus in-person? Obviously, there were some, some differences between vendor A, B, and C, but in general, um, you know, from using these, do you have any sort of data showing that you know, a virtual uh, survey is as accurate as in-person, or, or what kind of feed, um, uh, information do you have on that? I think our data is going to change and mature rapidly through 2020. I think the um, the use of a virtual survey, you know, greater than 95% of the time, as opposed to 7% of the time, will change our information. But historically, a virtual survey has been performed on smaller shipments, uh, and therefore. Uh, there's been an ease of survey that the virtual survey companies have had, and therefore we have seen a good reflection on the uh, survey to actual measurements being within that 10 to 12 percent range. Okay, great. Um, let's see, another uh, question. Um, before, obviously, you know, with the pandemic, virtual surveys have probably gone through the roof, um, but before this, were you seeing a general trend upward, uh, kind of flat? What was, what was kind of the general trend before, um, before COVID? I, I think before COVID, it was really uh, a specific demographic, uh, and that was tied to the culture of companies uh, on who were requesting virtual surveys as opposed to physical surveys. Uh, they were becoming more popular. I think it's a trend. Um, it is time-saving. It is something that can be done 24-7. It can be done after hours, uh, and therefore it was a benefit. But the use of virtual survey companies was also being um, a hybrid solution in that some moving companies we were seeing were starting to introduce the use of uh, solutions through the use of WhatsApp or FaceTime so that they could connect with the um, transferee on their schedule but not have to go through this specific technology. Uh, and they were finding that they had the ability to connect with the uh, transferee, and they were somewhat uh, insistent, I'm talking about the moving companies now, on still retaining that ability to have that interpersonal relationship. And so, as we saw with, with vendor B, the importance of the training and the importance of that connection will really breed the success and the ongoing percentage increase for the virtual survey companies. Okay, great, thanks. 
Um, okay, have you had any concerns from customers um, about having to do more work, you know, instead of just letting someone in the house and letting them, you know, uh, go around the house and, and do the work, um, have, have you had any customers who, you know, kind of been concerned about the need to actively participate in the process? Yes, we have had, we've had concerns on multiple footings. Um, the use of humor through a virtual survey does not translate. Some of the surveyors who have moved into these virtual survey companies um, have maybe been doing it for 20 or 30 years and have an ability to connect with a transferee and they do that whilst being in the home. When transferred through the virtual medium, um, that ability to translate humor um, has caused some level of, of concern and we've had to train and insist with companies that we've used to try and, to try and mitigate that risk. Um, we also find that the transferee um, becomes at ease very quickly or not. And that's when you see, as you commented, that they become hesitant or resistant to have to do more work of walking around their home. And there's also a level of um, coyness, I think is a fair word, that when you're with a surveyor in your home, you see things through a different set of eyes than when you're showing it through a camera and realize it's being recorded. So yes, in both those cases, there have been changes to the way uh, transferees have interacted through the virtual survey. Okay, great. Um, another question that came up actually is, have you ever done this with in-person surveys? Um, have you done this comparative uh, look? I was just wondering if that, uh, if, if that was something that you all had ever done. Uh, in-person surveys, the evaluation of surveyors uh, on in-person surveyors is done continually by, by moving companies or relocation companies who engage moving companies. Um, the feedback uh, that comes from transferees, whether it's through uh, a surveyor's booking ratio or through quality scores, is an ongoing metric that is evaluated by moving companies um, to ensure that the a physical surveyor is connecting with the transferee, is doing the right amount of survey detail and producing a document which reflects the right size of the shipment so that the resources can be allocated. It's a very important part of the core uh, attributes of a moving world. Okay, great. Well, I think that just about wraps us up here. Um, so uh, I want to thank you again very much for, uh, for sharing your insights with us today. Um, I also want to offer a very special thank you to Server Worldwide Relocation and Moving for their sponsorship of this webinar. You all have been a wonderful audience, and I hope that you've enjoyed the program. Uh, just a quick reminder to please keep uh, your eye on the Worldwide ARC website. We are constantly adding new events. And definitely watch your email later this afternoon for an email that will contain links to the course evaluation and also to the page where you'll be able to access the handout uh, and eventually the recording of this session. It will come to you from messenger at webex.com. Uh, thank you all again for joining us. I hope you have a great afternoon and you may now disconnect.